Some people might be a little bit intimidated when they first see the Wally tractor for the first time. Uh, with so many arcs and lines and points, uh, we can see how it might be a bit overwhelming at first. So this video is meant to simplify the process for you by discussing the differences between the various alignments, Bear, Wald, Lofgren, and even Stevenson, and of course, some differences, of course, between the new record collection arcs and the old record collection arcs. So let's start first with why we would want to align the stylus cantilever assembly properly in the first place. Among the jobs a tone arm must perform is to allow the stylus cantilever assembly to read the information in the grooves with the least amount of angular error possible. Angular error is when the stylus cantilever assembly is not perfectly tangential to the groove. We want to align the cartridge as close as possible to perfectly tangential over the entire playing surface of the record. However, because the tone arm is pivoted, we are offered only two locations where the stylus cantilever assembly will be perfectly tangential. Outside of these two locations, they're called null points, the stylus cantilever assembly will experience some angular error. This is also called tracing error. To identify the locations of the null points, we need to first start with the dimensions of the playing surface. In the 1950s and 1960s, the IEC determined a standard where the outermost and the innermost musical grooves should be. Those figures rounded are 146 millimeters on the outermost and about 60 millimeters on the innermost. So with only two null points, and known limits to the dimensions of the playing surface. The next question is where on this playing surface the null points should go? This is where Bearwald, Lofgren, Stevenson, and one or two other alignment patterns will vary from each other. Here's a graph of the Bearwald trace of a nine inch tone arm. The central horizontal axis is the distance in millimeters from the center of the record. The blue, the blue line is the degree of angular error, and the red line is the distortion percentage caused by the angular error. Notice that the null points are skewed towards the inner portion of the record's playing surface. Why the skewed null points instead of a nice even distribution of them across the record? This is because the distortion characteristics of the angular error depends upon what radius you are playing at. And with more distortion sensitivity to the inner grooves. And this has all to do with groove velocity at varying radius. So here's a crude demonstration. Consider a spinning record at 33 and a third revolutions per minute. You can see that the speed at which the stylus travels in the groove at the outer limits of the record will be fastest and uh, get slower and slower the closer it gets to the center of the record. Now imagine that this is the groove. And this piece of cardboard is the stylus and this cantilever assembly. And this, these two sets of tape represent the groove distance required for a single quarter note to, to play out in the duration of the groove. So the quarter note, say, begins here and ends there. The stylus cantilever assembly right now is perfectly tangential in the groove when it's like this. However, when you introduce angular error, just like this, you'll note that the one channel uh, will be reading the, the signal slightly before in time, earlier in time than the other channel. And this causes phase errors between channels and distortion. Now that same quarter note that we illustrated before with the tape played in the inner groove area takes up a much shorter groove length because the groove velocity is lower at the inner area of the record. The slower groove velocity is now represented by the same blue tape, but they are just obviously much closer together. However, the stylus at the same angular error as uh, before will have the left and the right channels reading the same quarter note with greater distortion than before because the left channel reading of the groove and the right channel reading of the groove have an even greater time differential between them. This is why the null points are skewed more towards the inner area of the playing surface. 
Here's the same tracing distortion pattern for Beowald as seen before, just using a more sensitive distortion scale. This graph shows that Beowald did a pretty good job of ensuring the distortion at the worst points across the record, the beginning, the end, and around 86 millimeters, were pretty equal to each other. However, Lofgren did it differently. He came up with a formula that placed the null points in different locations that offered an overall average decrease in distortion over the entirety of the playing surface of the record. But as with all things in engineering, there is a trade-off. The trade-off Lofgren made for the lower overall distortion was slightly higher distortion at the very end of the record as you can see here. Personally, I tend to align for Lofgren since all of my records go at least to the middle of the record. But far fewer of them have music at less than 63 millimeter radius, where Bearwold begins to have an advantage over Lofgren. This is also why at Wally Tools, we decided to avoid having the Stevenson alignment scheme on the Wally tractor completely. The Stevenson alignment favors the innermost groove of 60 millimeters very heavily, and we know that the benefits it would offer in the very last couple millimeters of the playing surface on a small percentage of your record collection just doesn't merit the overall increase in distortion it causes over the majority of your playback time on all of your records. In fact, it was this point, along with our observation that more recently produced record pressings had innermost grooves getting further and further away from the center of the record that inspired us here at Wham Engineering to produce a second set of arcs on the Wally tractor that offer uh, the second set right here, the newer, that offer the same uh, decrease in tracing distortion as if you had gone from a 9-inch arm to a 12-inch arm. Having noticed over the years that the innermost groove was creeping away from the center of the record, and knowing that if the innermost groove assumption changes, that it offers an opportunity to use Bayerwald and uh, Lofgren formulas to re relocate where the null points should now be placed in order to keep distortion to a minimum over the now shrinking playing surface of the record, we set about measuring this. We took well over 1,000 measurements of the innermost uh, groove and documented the um, year of production, the musical genre, and whether the record was an audiophile reissue or not. Um, we found that records produced in 1990 and afterwards, regardless of musical genre, have a significantly increased innermost groove, and that 68 millimeters from the center of the record was a statistically significant number. We then experimented with recalculating the new null points using the Bearwald and Lofkin formulas, and realigned to those null points, and as a result, enjoyed 26% less distortion on those records by doing so. It's as if we'd gone from a 9-inch tone arm to, the to a 12-inch tone arm. It's the same level of distortion reduction, but without the extra expense, reduction in rigidity, and increased moment of inertia that longer tone arms have to contend with. In our data set, the percentage of records that have an innermost groove of less than 68 millimeters is in the single digits. Um, so, if your record collection is produced predominantly in 1990 or later, and especially if you have a predominance of 45 millimeter audiophile pressings, you're likely to be happier with the playback quality that you get with the Wally Tractor's new, new record collection arcs. In any case, you'll find it revealing to listen to your tone arm with the same level of tracing distortion reduction you would get if you were to go from a 9 inch arm to a 12 inch arm. Try it out, enjoy the results. Once you get used to aligning your cartridge on the Wally tractor, it takes less than five minutes to get perfect alignment on it. So go ahead and see what your tone arm would sound like uh, if it grew by a few inches, all other tone arm engineering elements being equal, of course. If you can't decide and you don't want to experiment too much, simply find your effective length uh, among the old record collection arcs and rest assured that no other alignment tool on the market will give you the greater accuracy and more flexibility than the Wally Tractor Universal.